Today, you'll see why the MG-34 was developed in complete secrecy and how it was far ahead of its time when it appeared on the battlefield. We've all heard of the legendary German machine guns of World War II, but what really made them so effective were the many little-known details around everything from the weapon to ammo cans. In this video, we are looking at the MG-34 from a slightly different angle to show you why it remained in service despite being overshadowed by its younger brother, the MG-42. Let's begin. After World War I, the German military wanted to develop a new, modern and universal machine gun even though the Versailles Treaty strictly forbade Germany from developing and producing weapons like artillery and machine guns, behind closed doors they were secretly preparing revolutionary weapons for the next global conflict. One of these would become the world's first true general-purpose machine gun. The German military wanted to replace the bulky, hard-to-maneuver, water-cooled machine guns of World War I and make one adaptable for all roles. They wanted something to be used by infantry in both offensive and defensive roles, mounted on tanks, vehicles, aircraft, and even used as an anti-aircraft weapon. It needed to be capable of both light and heavy machine gun roles, all within a single weapon. The US military, for example, had the M250 caliber heavy machine gun, the M1919 medium machine gun, and light machine guns like the Browning automatic rifle. The Germans, on the other hand, had all of that and more in just one weapon, and you'll now see how. A carefully selected team of German experts working in complete secrecy finalized the design of the new machine gun in 1934, and two years later, it entered production. By the time the world became aware of it, around 50,000 units had already been produced, just as war erupted, and the MG-34 became a key component of the blitzkrieg tactics of a highly mobile, mechanized army. Combat the MG-34 saw action for the first time in the Spanish Civil War, where a few early models were sent to German-backed nationalist forces as part of a secret weapons testing program. It quickly proved to be the most advanced machine gun of its time, far superior to the outdated or even water-cooled models still in service with other nations. It was mounted on tanks, half-tracks and aircraft, and of course, widely used by infantry in numerous configurations. However, the MG-34 made up only about one-third of the German machine guns until 1941, when it was fully standardized. Throughout its service, nearly 600,000 units were built, making it the second most produced machine gun of the war. Although officially replaced by the MG-42, the MG-34 remained in production until the very end of the war, largely due to its use in tanks, but more on that in a moment. The MG-34 was the backbone of firepower for German rifle squads, as most infantry carried Car 98K rifles that fired the same powerful 8mm Mauser round. The Germans were the first to build their squads around the machine gun, using it as efficiently as possible in both offensive and defensive roles. A standard infantry squad consisted of 10 soldiers, each with a specific role. The squad leader coordinated fire and movement and was armed with an MP40 submachine gun. The machine gunner carried and fired the MG-34, supported by an assistant gunner, who helped with reloading, barrel changes and gun setup. Both carried pistols as sidearms. The rest of the squad consisted of ammo bearers and riflemen, responsible for protecting the team or advancing under the cover of machine gun fire. The same system was later applied to the MG-42 as well. Squads often had a horse or donkey with a cart to transport ammunition. Every 250 rounds, the barrel had to be changed, and experienced crews could do this in just a few seconds. In emergencies, they could fire up to 400 rounds with a single barrel before the weapon reached a critical point of overheating and damage. The MG-34 had a drum-style ammunition carrier mounted on the left side, holding a 50-round belt. This allowed the gunner to have the weapon ready to fire, with the ammunition neatly stored in a container that protected it from dust and debris. The US Army, for example, never had anything like this, forcing their machine gunners to carry belts of ammunition draped over their shoulders. Another example of German engineering excellence was the design of their ammo boxes. They had handles with leather grips for more comfortable carrying and were positioned so a soldier could hold two boxes in one hand. When folded, they could be stacked on top of one another, saving valuable space in armored vehicles or bunkers. Thanks to this design, a single soldier could quickly carry four boxes of 300 rounds when needed, bringing 1,200 rounds in one trip. These ammo boxes were also watertight, with additional small features for easier carrying and mounting on a tripod. The Germans thought about every small detail, like no other army in the war. They even had a winter adaptation for the bipod, preventing it from slipping on snow and ice, especially for use on the Eastern Front. The mount for the MG-34, which was later also used for the MG-42, was just as ingenious as the gun itself. At first glance, it might not seem like anything special. The Allies also had tripods for their machine guns. However, this mount was a major reason why German machine guns gained their deadly reputation, transforming the MG-34 into a heavy machine gun. 
This was the Lafette mount, a complex and highly advanced tripod. Instead of a simple, solid tripod like the Allies used, which had to be firmly secured into the ground, the Lafette mount had a spring-loaded recoil mechanism, making it far more accurate, especially at long ranges. A second key feature was the trigger system. The gunner operated the MG34 using a separate trigger built into the tripod, which was connected to the gun's own trigger. This allowed the gun and gunner to stay lower to the ground and better protected, making it difficult for Allied troops to locate the source of the fire. In fact, the gunner could even fire the weapon without being near it. The mount had a special system, allowing the gunner to set a firing area in a specific direction and elevation. Once set, the gunner could tie a string to the trigger, move to a safe position, and fire the weapon remotely. The machine gun would automatically sweep across the designated field of fire, covering a selected area while keeping the crew safe from return fire. In addition to this, the mount could be fitted with an optical sight, making it effective up to 2,000 meters, acting as a light artillery piece. The MG-34 also had a mount for a spiderweb sight for engaging low-flying aircraft. Despite weighing around 40 pounds and being highly complex, the Lafette mount was incredibly effective, giving the MG-34 and later the MG-42 a major battlefield advantage. Tanks the MG-34 was the only machine gun the Germans used in their tanks throughout the entire war as a coaxial and a bow gun. It could be used without a stock, unlike the MG-42, which had its recoil spring inside it. The MG-34's quick-change barrel system also made it ideal for tanks. While the MG-42's barrel change system was faster and more efficient for infantry use, where the barrel was removed from the side, it couldn't be used inside tanks without major modifications to the gun or turret. The MG-34's barrel was removed from the rear, making it far more suitable for armoured vehicles. The MG-34 had a unique fire selector system, which was actually a dual trigger mechanism. Pulling the upper portion of the trigger fired single shots, while pulling the lower portion engaged fully automatic fire. Early versions even had an adjustable rate of fire, with a device allowing the gunner to switch between 600 and 900 rounds per minute. However, this feature was quickly removed, as it was too complicated and impractical in combat. So, if the MG-34 was so good, why was it replaced by the MG-42, at least for infantry use? There were two main reasons. The first was production difficulty. The MG-34 was not designed for wartime mass production. It required high-quality materials and extreme precision machining, which was difficult to maintain once the war was at its peak. It is said that one MG-34 took 150 man-hours to produce, while the MG-42 took only half of that. The second problem was its tight machining tolerances. While this made it an exceptionally well-made weapon, it also made it more sensitive to dust, dirt, and extreme temperatures. It had serious reliability issues on the Eastern Front and in North Africa, where operators had to be extremely diligent with maintenance to keep the gun running. The MG42, on the other hand, was cheaper and faster to produce, made from stamped steel instead of milled parts. It was also far more reliable in the field with less maintenance. On top of that, it had an even higher rate of fire and a simpler, faster barrel change system, making it easier to use in combat. However, the MG-34 continued to be produced throughout the war. As mentioned earlier, it was still used on armoured vehicles and tanks. Some factories were also not easily convertible to MG-42 production, so they kept making 34s to avoid disruption and to produce spare parts for the hundreds of thousands of units already in service. Despite being overshadowed by its younger brother, the MG-34 remained in service long after World War II. Many countries continued using or modifying captured stockpiles, and it saw combat again in later conflicts. When it was introduced, the MG-34 completely revolutionized machine gun design. It became the first true general-purpose machine gun and set the standard for modern weapons that, nearly a century later, still follow the same concept.